Well, here we are again, folks. This is Brother Peter <clears throat> with tidbits from the Word. We're going to take a second look right now into the book of Hebrews. In the book of Hebrews, in chapter 4, it says to us, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with feelings. We have a high priest which can be touched with feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points, he was tempted like all men, or like Adam was. And then, let us therefore come boldly, boldly, uh, uh, unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. There is no time that man on this earth is not in need of the Savior. Constantly, on a daily basis, second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, week by week, month by month, we are in 100% need of the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has come, died on the cross for you and I, to give us deliverance from the wicked one. Now the wicked one, he doesn't like that. So what does he do? He comes on a moment by moment, minute by minute basis, and he comes to tempt and to trouble and to uh, persecute those who do believe in Jesus. But here again, we're looking in Hebrews, and we're gonna jump. In the last excerpt I was in, I went up to uh, chapter eight. And it said, wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. One of the best proofs in the Bible of this is the fact that Paul the Apostle was Saul. He was persecuting the Christian. He was dragging them out of the house. Dragging them out, if you please. And he was, i got to shut this man down. He was dragging them out of the house and killing them. Dragging them off to prison. Dragging mom and dad out, leaving the kids or taking the kids. He was killing people left and right. The last one, that he was involved in killing. And God said, no more, Saul, will you kill any more of my people uh, that I have saved? You will not do that anymore. And he was on the road to Damascus after Stephen was stoned. Paul had held his cloak, and he had been there and involved in the stoning of Stephen. And the Lord said that Stephen said, just before he died, he looked into heaven and saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. I would have thought he would have seen Jesus setting down. I suspect Jesus stood up at the fact that one of his servants who was preaching a sermon, who was telling the truth, who was really doing the work, was stoned to death there. And Jesus took note of it. And he said, this guy, I'm going to use him. I'm going to use him, I'm going to show him, and I'm going to send Peter over there to tell him the things that he is going to have to suffer to serve me. He has caused great suffering in the kingdom of heaven, and he is going to have to suffer too. Now, you and I, as Christians, have the opportunity to look at death in a different manner. Every single one of those Christians that Paul killed, sent home early, went on to heaven early, and there. It started their everlasting life early. And I'm still there, by the way. And they still are the great cloud of witnesses we have today over you and I. Uh, who, who served under the example and the shadow of heavenly things? As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle, for see, saith he, uh, thou maketh all things according to the pattern showed to thee in the mount. God came to Moses and showed Moses an exact, an exact pattern to follow to make the uh, t tabernacle in the wilderness. 
Listen, God has given us an exact pattern to follow Jesus Christ and to follow Him. If we will follow this pattern to the best of our ability to what it says, and this very Saul guy that God saw fit to save and forgive for killing all of those Christians, forgive him for all the murders that he had done. He had literally murdered people, literally killed people outright, put them in the lions with the lion, done many things, scourged them. By the way, in that day, it was a common practice to scourge somebody that didn't believe the same way you believe. And so here they were, and he said, but now he hath obtained a much excellent ministry by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promise. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Had the first covenant that God made with Moses and with the children of Israel had not, if it had been faultless, there wouldn't have been any need for Jesus to come. So there was fault in that covenant. And the fault was that the human being was more depraved than he should have been, was more susceptible to the wiles of the devil than he should have been. And because of that great fall in the Garden of Eden, man became so far away from God and so depraved, he was not able to, within himself to yield to the uh, things that God wanted him to. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the day cometh, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with my fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Because they didn't continue in his covenant, he could not look at them. God could only look on righteousness. He can only look on you and I in personal if we are righteous through his son, Jesus Christ. If we are righteous through Jesus, if we have said, God, forgive me of my sin, come into my heart and save my soul, then we're righteous through his Son, and then he can come into our heart. And then look verse 10, it said, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After these days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them on their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. That was the day when Jesus was to come on the scene and the Holy Spirit was to come on the scene and they would, they would be able to say, Forgive me, Lord, I am a sinner. And the Lord come into their heart. See, before the New Testament and the Old Testament, the law was something that had to be followed by the shedding of blood of an animal. But when Jesus Christ shed his blood, he shed it once and for all for the last time. It said, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered once into the Holy of Holies, having obtained eternal redemption for us. And that is in chapter 9 and verse 12. Jesus had obtained redemption for all mankind that will receive him. He will not, he will not force himself on you. He stands at the door and knocks. If any man answer, hear him and answer. He will come in and sup with them, and they with him. He said in verse 15, And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption 
of the transgression that were under the first testament, they which I call might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Eternal inheritance is given to you and I as a gift. You can not earn it. Do you know that Saul, when he was on the road to Damascus, did not do one single solitary thing to be saved other than commit, other than admit he was a sinner and he got a free gift of salvation. <coughs> and you and I are in the same exact place. We must admit we are a sinner and get uh, confess that to the Lord Jesus Christ and he will forgive us of our sin Almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood is no remission. Remember, and I've said this before, Adam and Eve, when they sinned, God killed the animals, it said, and dressed them with skins. They had skins to put over their body to hide their nakedness, which they never would have had that nakedness had they not sinned. And as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall be a part, shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. You may be a person without sin unto salvation. If you have Jesus in your heart, if you have him looking on you, you are light from the inside out. Are you allowing that light to shine out of you? Or have you got it bottled up with a bunch of junk in your flesh and sinful things you're doing on the outside flesh? And uh, the Bible said, grieve not that spirit by which you are sealed unto the day of redemption. You are sealed unto the day of redemption. It said, from henceforth, tell his enemies to be made to footstool. Tell his enemies about him. Tell the people who are not saved about him. Go on and do what you're supposed to do. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful to promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling together of ourselves as the matter of some is, exalting one another. And so such more as ye see the day approaching, do it. So much more as you see the day of the Lord approaching. He is approaching, the day is approaching when the Lord is going to come back and say, come up hither. Listen, Yesterday, I asked a man if he thought he was a sinner, and he said, no, he didn't. And I explained to him such a simple, simple as a child thing. If you, I stole a cookie out of a cookie jar, is that a sin? Yes, sir. Have you done many things like that throughout your life? Yes, I have. Well, then that makes you a sinner. And if you realize that you are a sinner, the thing you need to do is reverse that and say, God, forgive me. I am a sinner. Forgive me of that sin. Cleanse me. Come into my heart and save my soul that I may be able to learn how to not do these things or those things that I do on a daily basis. This man that got saved, yes, he was a church-going man, worked in a church and regular, probably one of the most honest guys you'll ever meet. Probably one of the most righteous guys you'll ever meet, in a sense of the word, yet lost and on his way to hell. Had he not asked Jesus to forgive him of his sins yesterday, and he had died that night, he would have died and gone to hell forever. So it's very important that we talk to those around us that we meet. We're sent out on a daily basis for more commission than to just go to work and make a dollar or make a payday. We're sent out to witness for Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. After all, he died on the cross for you and me. Wouldn't the least thing we could do be to speak to that person? Hey, I was in a doctor's office yesterday. 
gave a tract to the doctor, the nurses, the other people, people sitting in the chair. Hey, we're out there to be a witness. We are out there to be a witness. Are you God's child or not? If you are, act like it. I must go. My time is coming, gone. See you.